I started thinking about my uncle who ate himself to death when I was 12 years old and how much that scared me and it made me sad. And it made me sad to see that there were millions, if not more than a billion people that were in the same kind of abusive relationship with food that my mom and my sister were. So I said, I don't know if it's a big business, but I know it's a big problem. And that's the problem that we're gonna solve. And so we decided to build a totally new kind of company. We started Quest Nutrition in 2010, just as we were coming out of the Great Recession. I was wearing a hairnet and a lab coat every day, and my employees were former gang members, ex-drug dealers, felons. We were in Compton, and we literally told everybody in the neighborhood, I don't care if you've been convicted of a crime. I just want to know if you're willing to bust your ass to change your life. And if you are, you're gonna get an interview. And I'm not gonna ask for your resume. I don't care about your resume. Your resume tells me where you've been. It doesn't tell me the price you're willing to pay to become somebody new. Every belief that you have is a choice. I choose to believe that human potential is nearly limitless. And this was the belief that changed my life. Because once I realized, so it's not about who you are today. It's about who you want to become and the price you're willing to pay to get there. And I promise you, the day that you're willing to pay any price, you'll achieve what you want to achieve. If you truly believe that human potential is limitless, what do you want to become? And what price are you willing to pay to get there? Gives you better sex, increases your good cholesterol, gives you more friends, gives you more meaning, engagement, life satisfaction, and happiness. If you have a purpose-driven life, it adds years to your life. You live longer. Let me share two stories with you. Story number one, we're interviewing one of those school teachers. She says, the first year I taught was heaven. The second year I taught was hell. I had five boys that second year, and they were incorrigible. And there was one kid in particular. He was impossible. One day, this kid's in the doorway of the classroom and he's kicking and moving his arms and making noises and I lost it. He, she said, I'm ashamed to say these words. But I walked towards that kid with the intention of kicking him. Thank heavens he got up and ran away. I kept walking. I went to the principal's office. I said, this is it. It's him or me. And the principal took the kid out. She said, I felt terrible. 